Hello welcome to IT Expert YouTube video series. Today we are going to talk about Entity Relationship Diagram. What is Entity? Entities represent data components within a database that could be living or non-living, real or abstract, so long as their data is stored in the database. Examples of entities include people, places, objects, events, or concepts. In ER diagrams, entities are usually depicted by rectangles, with the entity name at the top. What is attribute? An attribute is a description of the properties of an entity or relationship. For instance, the entity shipment could have attributes such as shipment ID, client ID, shipment time created, billing address, etc. In the Crow's foot notation, an attribute is represented as a line of text in the lower compartment of the corresponding entity's rectangle. Relationship A relationship denotes how various entities interact with each other. For instance, in a database for a vehicle hiring service, a customer will form a relationship with the entity vehicle through the act of selecting. Select is, therefore, a relationship between the two entities. The relationship between data in one table and data in another table is called cardinality. Specifically, the cardinality indicates the number of times one entity in a table can relate with the instances of another entity. When drawing relationships in Crow's foot notation, there are two indicators one for multiplicity while the other indicates whether a relationship is optional or mandatory. A mandatory relationship is shown by a line perpendicular to the relationship line, while an optional relationship is shown by an empty circle. When drawing relationships in Crow's foot notation, there are two indicators one for multiplicity while the other indicates whether a relationship is optional or mandatory. A mandatory relationship is shown by a line perpendicular to the relationship line, while an optional relationship is shown by an empty circle. In data modeling, there are three types of cardinalities. One-to-one. -one. In a one-to-one -one association, one entity in a table can relate only once to an entity in another table. For instance, a customer can hire only one vehicle at a time, and a vehicle can be assigned to only one customer at a time. In an entity relationship diagram, one row in one table would correlate to only one row in another table. In the E notation, a mandatory one-to-one -one relationship is represented by two lines perpendicular to the relationship line near both entity rectangles. One-to-many A one-to-many relationship occurs when one instance of an entity can interact with multiple instances of another entity. For instance, one customer can hire several vehicles, while each vehicle can only be assigned to one customer at a time. In the E notation, a one-to-many relationship is represented by a single line at the end of the single instance, and a three-pronged crow's foot symbol facing the multiple instance rectangle. Many-to-many -many. This type of cardinality occurs when multiple instances of one entity can relate with more than one instance of another set of entities. Imagine a scenario in which a customer could select multiple vehicles, and a vehicle could be leased by multiple customers within a certain time period. In the E notation, a many-to-many -many relationship is depicted by crow's feet at both ends of the relationship line. Types of data models There are three types of data models in ER modeling. Conceptual and logical data models The conceptual and logical data models describe how information is organized in a system regardless of the database used. The logical model specifies entities, attributes, and relationships between entities. It abstracts away from actual DBMS used in the implementation of the system. Physical Data Model The physical data model represents how the model will be built in the database. It shows the full table definition, including column names, column data types, table constraints, the primary key, the foreign keys, and the relationships between tables. The physical data model will be different for different RDBMS. For example, the data type for a given column may be different between MySQL and SQL Server. This section appears incomplete. There is no explanation of what a conceptual model is. Also, the last sentence is incomplete. How to draw an ER diagram Let's create an ER diagram for a data model using Vertibolo. Consider a simple scenario in which a client orders food at a restaurant. The client must purchase one or more menu items, while each menu item is served by one attendant. One first, identify the entities in your database. In this case, we have three entities. Do the second step involves identifying the relationships between the selected entities. 
3. The third step involves identifying cardinalities. A client can be assigned multiple menu items. An attendant can only deliver one menu item at a time before taking another order from the same client. 4. The fourth step is identifying entity attributes. Make sure that every attribute is mapped to only one entity assign modifiers for those that belong to more than one. Specify the primary key for each entity by using the most uniquely identifying attributes. 5. Once you have identified the entities, relationships, cardinalities, and attributes, you can now create your ER diagram. Here's what our sample project will look like when designed using the crow's foot notation. Disclaimer All the above diagrams were created using Vertibolo. Data modeling challenges in the real world are often complex. Creating a precise ER diagram requires not only the right knowledge but also the right tools. Whether you are learning or designing a data model, Vertibolo acts as a great resource to your ERD designing needs. ER Diagram Example Use Cases Let's look at a few examples of the Entity Relationship Diagram to understand its use cases better. Use Case Data Model for a Freelancer's Collective this model shows the logical structure that can be used in large freelance projects that require collaboration between distributed teams. Since the freelance world connects professionals in a wide range of fields with varying skill sets, you will need a tool to orchestrate the interactions among freelancers, teams, and clients. Let's consider the Freelancer Collective platform as a project management solution that helps connect various actors to collaborate on a number of projects. Entities our model is broken into four main subject areas freelancers, customers, and projects, teams, and project phases. The freelancers section includes all the information provided by freelancers when they register to use the application. The information relevant to our database includes the freelancer's skills, skill level, and skill sets. We also need to understand the freelancer's availability to be sure that they can deliver an assigned project. The second focus area is customers and projects. Customers use the system to upload their projects and connect with freelancers. This section includes the customer, project, project status history, skill, and project outcome tables. Customers have also registered to use the application, and the system extracts their details from a special form. Project details are revealed when the client posts a project. The third section is for the teams. This subject area forms a team and assigns them a project based on the freelancer's ability and skill sets. The team is the major entity for this section. Other tables in this section include team member, in charge, freelancer, phase plan, and project. The final section involves the project phases. Some entities in this section have appeared in other subject areas, and these include freelancer, customer, project outcome, and project. The new entities in this set include phase history, phase catalog, and phase plan. Relationships. When a client posts a project, the system checks for the skill requirements and the availability of freelancers. The system then creates a team of freelancers who will collaborate on the project, which is now divided into phases. This system works as a supervisor, looking for the best collective that will work on a project, and assigning different project phases to different freelancers depending on the availability and skill level. Collectively, this is how the data model can look. Use case peer-to-peer -peer lending data model. You can find a detailed discussion of this ER diagram in a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform data model. Peer-to-peer -peer lending refers to the practice of multiple lenders and borrowers transacting through a common platform. A peer-to-peer -peer lending platform here essentially acts as a liaison between the parties to enable the process of lending, while ensuring necessary compliance and maintaining data security of all parties. Let's understand the data model by considering a scenario. Entities the entities are the following. A borrower requests a loan of a specific amount through the peer-to-peer -peer lending platform after submitting details of his credit score, default history, tax returns, etc. Additional details of the loan may include repayment duration and preferred interest rate window. The lender register on the platform by entering its respective financial details, including KYC, tax returns, etc. It also enters its lending preferences, including the loan duration, interest rate, amount, borrower credit score, etc. Entity Relationship Diagram Interview Questions 1. What are the three types of data models? The three types of data models Physical Data Model 
This is where the framework or schema describes how data is physically stored in the database. Conceptual data model. This model focuses on the high level, user's view of the data in question. Logical data models. They straddle between physical and theoretical data models, allowing the logical representation of data to exist apart from the physical storage. 2. What is a table? A table consists of data stored in rows and columns. Columns, also known as fields, show data in vertical alignment. Rows also called a record or tuple, represent data's horizontal alignment. 3. What is normalization? Database normalization is the process of designing the database in such a way that it reduces data redundancy without sacrificing integrity. 4. What does a data modeler use normalization for? The purposes of normalization are Remove useless or redundant data Reduce data complexity Ensure relationships between the tables in addition to the data residing in the tables Ensure data dependencies and that the data is stored logically 5. So, what is denormalization, and what is its purpose? Denormalization is a technique where redundant data is added to an already normalized database. The procedure enhances read performance by sacrificing write performance. 6. What does ERD stand for, and what is it? ERD stands for Entity Relationship Diagram and is a logical entity representation, defining the relationships between the entities. Entities reside in boxes, and arrows symbolize relationships. 7. What's the definition of a surrogate key? A surrogate key, also known as a primary key, enforces numerical attributes. This surrogate key replaces natural keys. Instead of having primary or composite primary keys, data modelers create the surrogate key, which is a valuable tool for identifying records, building SQL queries, and enhancing performance. 8. What is an enterprise data model? This is a data model that consists of all the entries required by an enterprise. 9. Explain the two different design schemas. The two design schema is called star schema and snowflake schema. The star schema has a fact table centered with multiple dimension tables surrounding it. A snowflake schema is similar, except that the level of normalization is higher, which results in the schema looking like a snowflake. 10. What is a slowly changing dimension? These are dimensions used to manage both historical data and current data in data warehousing. There are four different types of slowly changing dimensions SCD type 0 through SCD type 3. Thank you for watching this video. We provide Hansman training with Labs Homework Group Projects. Prepare you for the certification. Provide real projects. Internship opportunities. Support you in Resume LinkedIn. Staffing support. Provide tech references. In-person online class. Class retake options and more. Call us at 847-350-9034 for your free career consultation meeting. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for the latest